A question anyone who's ever fished has wondered, can fish feel pain? If you've ever fished, you've wondered whether or not your hook is actually hurting your catch. No doubt you've heard yes and you've also heard no. So what's the real answer? Well, the actual answer is yes. And let's jump into why that's the case. Feeling pain is a necessity for all life forms as it teaches them to avoid things that cause harm. Think of how many times your pet has avoided something after it got hurt, such as running into a glass door. Much like your pets at home, marine life learned to avoid things too. For example, pike and carp fish have been known to avoid a fisherman's hook. A big argument is, if they can feel pain, why do they keep going for the lures? The main reason is that no lures are always looking the same. If a fish keeps getting caught by the same lure, it'll eventually recognize it and avoid it. But with so many lures and forms of bait, they don't have the mental capacity to remember everything. Fish actually have the nerve receptors similar to the kinds you'll find in birds, mammals, and amphibians. Supposedly, in one experiment by scientists, 23 pain receptors were found on the face of a rainbow trout. And that's just the face. Pain in fish is actually further confirmed in an article by PETA, People for Ethical Treatment of Animals, saying, when fish are yanked from the water, they begin to suffocate. Their gills often collapse and their swim bladders can rupture because of the sudden change in pressure. With all of the pain involved with that process, it makes sense why the fish flop around. There's been a lot of studies over the years looking into whether or not fish can feel pain. And with studies comes experiments to test theories. In one particular experiment, goldfish were injected with a weak acid into their lips. Scientists noticed a double increase in their respiration. They reduced swimming, and they even stopped eating for three hours. The goldfish began to rest on the gravel while rocking back and forth and balancing on their fin. They also rubbed their lips on the tank walls in the gravel below. This test should be more than enough to convince anyone, but scientists also tested the effects of painkillers on zebrafish. They put the zebrafish on a tank where one side of the chamber was empty and the other filled with gravel and plants. They, being the zebrafish, preferred the habitat of gravel and plants, and so they all stuck to that side. They were then injected with a chemical known to cause mild pain. With a new choice offered to the fish, the previous empty chamber now containing painkiller or the chamber with the gravel and plants in it, they all chose the pain relief chamber. Although their brain is constructed differently as opposed to humans, it's believed that fish's sensitivity to pain is similar to ours. That being said, scientists believe where they feel pain is different. Scientists claim to have discovered that throughout different kinds of fish, their most sensitive areas for pain were skin around the eyes, olfactory sacs, their tail, and their pectoral fins. A third study helped to prove fish's cognitive ability. Proving cognitive ability, in case you're wondering, is to prove a reaction of pain is not reflex, but consciously made. This was through yet another experiment. The scientists found that goldfish injected with saline solution and exposed to high level of heat in a tank hovered in one spot when put back into their home tank. The scientists labeled this as fearful avoidance behavior. This, according to scientists, is cognitive, not reflexive. On the other hand, the other fish in the experiment who were exposed to a painkiller solution didn't show this behavior. So, after all of these experiments and research, it's clear that fish feel pain. The problem is that this now creates another question to puzzle everyone on the topic. What does this mean for fishermen? Do they stop? Some people who are avid animal activists will say, yes, you should stop fishing as you're taking an innocent life. Others would say, it's been done for so long and we can't just ask someone to stop a habit that's been around forever. There is, however, an interesting concept we found flying around. It talks about the difference between fishing for sport and fishing for food, categorizing them on two different levels. In fishing for sport, you're intentionally hurting the fish, knowing that it will be wounded and immediately released, having to live with its wound until it recovers. On the other hand, if you're fishing for food, you're engaged in the natural process, the circle of life, where you simply have to eat. We, of course, don't want to pick sides on this concept. We'd rather know what you think, so let us know down below. That just about catches you up on everything to do with this subject. What do you think about pain and fish? Do you believe it? As always, I'm Abby from Watch Jojo, and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.